Good morning. morning. Welcome to Worship in God's House this morning as we continue our journey through the Epiphany season as the Lord uncovers his love for us through his word in Jesus Christ. Uh, Just a couple of announcements today. We hope to have uh, adult Bible study after church and also Sunday school as well. Um, The hybrid Bible study will continue on Monday. And uh, then also we will have the Wednesday evening Bible study too. Catechism class will begin again, Lord willing, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Just a couple of other announcements. Uh, There are our uh, people we are praying for right now. Um, So we'll remember them in our prayers later on. There are the offerings also so far um, in this fiscal year from July through January. There will be more said about that uh, during the voters meeting, the congregational meeting coming up uh, at the end of February. And if you would please note in your bulletins and in the e-news, that date is different from what I had posted before. It's the third Sunday in February. If you could mark that, we would appreciate your attendance at that important meeting. Uh, A couple of other things too to keep in mind, the hockey outing. Uh, The deadline for that, uh, to sign up for that, is uh, next Sunday, and that hockey outing will happen on February 12th, so um, that's uh, with the local uh, Indianapolis team playing, and uh, so uh, a couple other announcements too. Um, We thank uh, a member of our church who actually donated a guest book, and maybe you noticed that near the cross in the fellowship hall. And we hope that gets used many times, but if you see a visitor here, or you bring a visitor along, please have them sign our guest book as well. Uh, we'd love to respond to them and say thank you for coming and joining us too. And that helps us to do that when we have some information from them. And again, thank you to those who are reserving the fellowship hall ahead of time before uh, you have maybe a festivity, uh, a special occasion that you're hosting here at church because there are other events that uh, we are also looking at maybe hosting uh, this coming uh, spring and summer as well. So um, please keep that in mind. And by the way, the February uh, Forwarding Christ is available as well with many interesting articles in there as well. Um, The article that is highlighted here on the screen, it's about Christian teens, how many of them are losing their identity in Christ. Uh, What can parents and Christians help uh, do to help them? So the new meditations is also available too. Are there any other announcements this morning that anybody would like to uh, bring up? All right. Well, as we said, during the Epiphany season, Jesus uncovers his love for us through the scriptures. And today we are going to look at the theme, how delight is uncovered. True delight and joy is found in Jesus. And that will be the focus of our worship this morning. We begin with the first hymn, Arise and Shine in Splendor. God bless our worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you. Son to be the light of the world. 
Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and believed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite the children to please come forward for a children's devotion at this time. Good morning. Great to have you here. Anybody know what this is? Pretty easy to find out what this is, huh? What is this, Ethan? A, a water bottle. And it actually has water in it, too. Now, what if you were not thirsty for water and you wanted maybe a, a bottle of milk? Could you say to this bottle of water, turn to milk, and it would be milk? No, that wouldn't happen. That couldn't happen. Milk doesn't usually go in a bottle like this either, that's right. But you know what? There was someone named Jesus who took big jars of water and he turned them into something called wine. He did that at a wedding. He did that at a wedding so that people could be happy and rejoicing to know that there were things that they could eat and drink. And Jesus helped by turning the water into wine because the wine was almost gone. But Jesus didn't do that just to make people happy. Jesus also revealed something about himself. You know who Jesus looked like? Jesus looked like you and me, like a human being, two eyes and a nose and lips and two ears. But Jesus was more than just a man. Jesus is who else? Jesus is God. Jesus is God who can take water and turn it into wine. Jesus is true God who can take all your sins and put them on himself and go to the cross and pay the price for every single one of your sins. Jesus isn't just a man who died on the cross. Jesus is true God who died and rose again victoriously for you and for me. So when you think of Jesus, don't think of him as just a man. He is your God who loves you deeply, who loves you and wants you to be with him forever in heaven. Thank you for listening this morning. You can be seated. Our first reading from God's Word this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah as he writes in chapter 62. The Lord desires that his people be joyful like a bride toward their groom. We rejoice in this beautiful marriage that God gives us in this blessed relationship that we have with him. For the sake of Zion, I will not be silent. For the sake of Jerusalem, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth shining brightly and her salvation burns like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness and all kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will assign to you. Then you will be a beautiful crown in the Lord's hand and a royal diadem in the palm of your God. You will never again be called abandoned, and your land will never again be called desolation, for you will be called my delight is in her, and your land will be called married, because the Lord delights in you, and your land will be married, for just as a young man marries a virgin, your sons will marry you, and just as a bridegroom rejoices over a bride, your God will rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to join in the singing of Psalm 145 
you're invited to sing the entire song. desire to praise his name forever because of the great gifts that he has given to us through Jesus Christ our Savior. He speaks of those beautiful gifts here in this, these words from Ephesians chapter 3 beginning with verse 14 which will also serve as our sermon text for this morning. The Apostle Paul writes, For this reason I kneel before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the entire family in heaven and on earth receives its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he would strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner self, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Then being rooted and grounded in love, I pray that you would be able to comprehend, along with all the saints, how wide and long and high and deep his love is, and that you would be able to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able, according to the power that is at work within us, to do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. Amen. from the Father, full of grace and truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The 
gospel this morning comes from John chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, as Jesus reveals himself to be true God, changing water into wine. Three days later, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My time has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Six stone water jars, which the Jews used for ceremonial cleansing, were standing there, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did. When the master of the banquet tasted the water that had now become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the banquet called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when the guests have had plenty to drink, then the cheaper wine. You saved the good wine until now. This, the beginning of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing the next hymn. This hymn is a familiar hymn, yet it's put to a new melody. I will introduce the first two verses, and you're welcome to join in singing the last two. Jesus, your boundless love to me.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we meditate upon God's word this morning, we turn to Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Recently, I was at a gathering, and across the table from me was a young lady in her 20s. She was excited. She was excited because she is a bride-to-be. And when the subject of her upcoming wedding was talked about, she couldn't hold back. She had a lot of things to say about all the details going into the planning for that wedding. There's a lot of joy in thinking about a wedding. Maybe some brides here remember that anticipation leading up to that time when they would be married. In a very real way, the Bible talks about you and me as being a bride. You are the bride of Christ. And knowing that fills us with joy. Some people think to have faith in Jesus is the opposite of really having joy in life, that the two are somehow mutually exclusive, when in reality, as you and I know, that true joy is found in our groom, our bridegroom, Christ Jesus. We hear in one hymn, from heaven above he sought her, Jesus sought her to be his holy bride, with his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Dear friends, let us remember that real joy is found in Jesus, and in fact, Jesus helps to multiply our joy as we grow ever closer to him. The Apostle Paul wrote long ago a prayer in Ephesians, a prayer that he wrote to this bride of Christ in the city of Ephesus. He started his prayer in chapter 1, then he got sidetracked and started to talk about grace for a while. Then he comes back to the prayer in chapter 3, and then he gets sidetracked a little bit more. And now he comes back to the prayer once again. And he humbly prays for the bride of Christ in Ephesus. He prays that the riches of God would continue to be given to them. Do you realize that as the bride of Christ, you have riches beyond compare? You can rest in the riches of Christ's glory, as Paul says. Now, what is Christ's glory? How can I be rich in Christ's glory? Think of it this way. You glory in the fact that your groom, Jesus Christ, is gracious to you. Just a chapter before this in the book of Ephesians, at the very beginning of chapter 2, he says, As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. There was nothing that I could do as a sinful person to come to my groom, to give thanks to my groom, to do anything that would make him pleased with me. But in my deadness, God made me alive in Christ Jesus. God gave me life by his grace to know that I am his child, to know that I am his bride, dearly loved, dearly blood-bought. And that's something that we cherish all our lives, to know how much our groom loves us. Rest in those riches of his grace. Rest in the riches of his glory. A glory that does not shine and shimmer so often in this world. It's glory that is found on a dark day with a dark cross where blood was shed. That's what real glory is. A glory where God showed his selfless love for a world of sinners to pay the price that they owe for sin, to relieve them of the burden, to give them full pardon for their sins. That's how much Jesus loved his bride. 
And because Jesus loves his bride so much, he not only is next to us all the time, like a bride and a groom in this world, Paul writes that Christ dwells within you. That goes beyond human logic, doesn't it? How could Christ possibly dwell within us? Paul goes on to explain that our groom actually dwells in us by faith. We look to his word, and in that word he reveals himself. Through that word, the Holy Spirit works faith in our hearts to know and to understand that our relationship is so close that our God dwells within us. Just think about that for a moment. We are sinners who should be separated entirely from a holy, righteous God. But this God, who is our groom, longs to have a relationship with us, and he longs to have that relationship through the means of grace, through his word. And he continues to sustain and nourish that relationship as he dwells within us through the means of grace. Cherish that fact that your Christ dwells within you and desires to give you many, many gifts as he dwells within you. Know this gift, the gift of the trust and the faith of knowing that all your sins have been forgiven. Or this gift that he lavishes upon his bride, the motivation to, to live for him because he loves us so much. Just think, if we know somebody else loves us so much, we want to express that love at times. And God gives us the freedom to express that love towards our groom, Jesus Christ, who loves us. And he also gives us another blessing, not just to look at the here and now, but to look beyond to the heavenly glory that is to come. All these are gifts that our groom lavishes upon his bride. So how will this relationship remain strong as Christ dwells within us? He tells us a little bit later in our text how that is, happens. He says, this is rooted and founded upon Christ Jesus, our Savior. Rooted. Can you think about how a tree is, is rooted in the ground? We see the tree above the ground, and we wonder sometimes how that tree can remain standing. Is it, does it stand because it's never seen any storms before? Of course not. Many, many trees have seen many, many storms in life, but it remains upright and standing strong because its roots sink deeply into the ground. You and I are like trees, Trees that are rooted in the Lord. Trees that are rooted in God's word. And as you hear the word and as you grow in that word, guess what your roots do? They grow deeper and deeper and deeper. And you remain standing in that faith, not because you haven't faced any storms in life, but you remain standing because of the roots that have been planted in Christ Jesus. You know what's going on above ground. You go through many storms in your life. But it's what's below ground, what is in the inner self, that inner self that God has created in us to believe and to trust in the Lord no matter our circumstances, to always rejoice in Jesus because of his great love for us. Those are the riches that our Lord has lavished upon us Rest in him, just as in the midst of Jesus' storms, Jesus rested in his Father, calling out to his Father, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will. Jesus always found repose in the Father. May we find our rest and repose in the riches of our Savior, who gave his life for us. But there's also another way that God multiplies 
his love for us. How he multiplies the joy that we have. He multiplies that joy by allowing us to grasp the dimensions of his love. You know, if a little child takes out his Legos and makes like a little building, you can measure the dimensions of that. Or if there's a skyscraper in a big city like downtown Indianapolis, you can measure the dimensions of that building. You might need a big, big measurement to use it to get to the exact footage of whatever that building is. But how do you measure God's love? Paul talks about the height, the depth, the width, the breadth of that love. And really, by faith, you are able to grasp that love. But we, by faith, also recognize that you're never going to be completely able to measure that love because it goes beyond human understanding that the infinite God would become man for the very purpose of your salvation, that he will stop at nothing to save you, to rescue you from hell after this brief life is over. How do you measure the dimensions of that love? It's impossible. But that impossibility isn't meant to frustrate us. It is meant to make us more and more eager to dig ever deeper into his word so that God would reveal even more of his love. And we are to do that. We can do that in our private study at home. But notice what Paul says here. We are also to do that with all the saints, growing together as all the saints, encouraging one another, sharing with one another what we learn, what we study from God's word. One of the fundamental things we do is gather together in church. These are challenging times right now, we understand, but this is one of our main purposes in life, to come together as God's people, his body, his bride, to worship him, to grow stronger in faith in him. We have the wonderful opportunities to gather together as his saints, to grow and to have our roots sink even deeper through Bible study through family devotions, if we're blessed with family. These are all gifts that God lays before us. May our faith in him continue to grow and grow and grow. And did you notice how much God desires that growth to be? He says, until we all reach and are filled to, the, to all the fullness of God, now just think about that for a moment. To what extent does God want to fill us with his love, with Christ's love? To the extent of the love that God has. You know that we won't reach that in this lifetime, but we continue eagerly to want to grow in that love, to grow in that knowledge of his love so that we grasp ever more the dimensions of the height and width and depth and breadth of his great love for us. Dear friends, don't put joy on one side and Jesus on the other, thinking you can't put them together. It is that very Jesus who multiplies your joy. He has multiplied your joy with the very knowledge that you are his dearly loved bride who has given you riches beyond compare and who has revealed to you his infinite love there at the cross where God gave his very life for you. Continue to grow in that love and cherish the fact of how wide and deep and high and long that love is for you. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our faith our, uh, with the words of the Nicene Creed as printed on page 10 or on the screen. 
Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. O oh, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer from sin, we thank you that we who labor under a heavy burden of sin and troubles may come to you by your gracious invitation and find rest for our souls. Through the love which you have shown us by suffering and dying for our sins, Give us boldness to call upon your name for all our needs. Give us courage to ask for your forgiveness when we sin and to seek your comfort and assurance in all our troubles. Whenever we need a greater measure of strength to carry out our daily tasks and Christian duties or guidance to conduct our everyday affairs, teach us to ask these things of you. Remind us to pray for courage and help to overcome evil and for zeal to live godly lives. Let us never hesitate to approach your throne of grace for healing from sickness, help from troubles, solutions to problems, and rescue from peril. Let us not fail to pray for your promised gift of the Holy Spirit for we need him to open the scriptures for our understanding and to nourish and preserve our faith. Blessed Jesus, ever give us faith to trust that you are our Savior from sin and our Lord who has all power in heaven and earth. We do believe in you, but help us also in our moments of unbelief. Enable us to pray in faith in no way doubting that you will hear and answer us. Through the Spirit, teach us always what things to pray for so that our requests agree with your good and gracious will. And teach us also to include the needs of others in our prayers, lest we think only of ourselves. Merciful Savior, we confess that we often neglect to commit our needs to you in prayer as well as the many things that trouble us and burden our souls. We confess we often make errors of judgment simply because we fail to seek your good counsel. Oh, how often we neglect to express our thanks and praise for all your benefits. And because of our thoughtlessness, we often ask you for foolish and hurtful things. Forgive these and all our sins and teach us always how to pray in Jesus' name. We also pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick. We pray for Mary Ellen Neal as she continues her rehab at Aspen Trace. We pray for Wesley Napier, a relative of the Colton family who has been recently diagnosed with cancer. 
We pray that you would give him strength to endure the radiation treatments, and we pray that you would give him a steadfast faith in you, knowing that in all things you are working for the good of those who love you. We also pray for all our families who are still continuing to deal with quarantine and COVID. We pray, O oh Lord, that in your good time, you would bring healing and help so that God's people would join together once again to praise you in your house. We also pray for Kenny Colton, the father of Richard Colton, who celebrated his 90th birthday yesterday. We thank you for the long life you have given to Kenny, and we pray that you would give him a firm faith to look ahead to the eternal home where our birthdays will extend for all eternity. Bless him in his faith and grant him the rest and assurance of your love now and always. Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions. O oh Lord, as the Apostle Paul brought his prayers to you, we humbly bring our prayers to you as well, boldly confessing that you are our Father who loves us dearly and deeply. We pray that you would continue to hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. In your name we pray, amen. We continue our worship with the preface. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give. truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Bless. 
thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you send to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus also took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. is a new hymn, and yet it is put to a familiar melody. If you know the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. This is a beautiful hymn about joyously praising the Savior. You may sing along as it is also accompanied by Kathy. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given over to death for all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus our Savior. Depart in his peace. Amen.
strong. All I see on earth is fleeting. God of losing love for me lasts for all eternity. We invite you to please stand. 
give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the final hymn, Jesus Loves Me.